there are still privileged places where nature continues on its way, changes and evolves as it always has. Places such as the Doñana National Park in southern Spain, where hundreds of species live governed only by the laws of nature and the pace of the changing seasons. But what happens when unchecked human activity alters these conditions? What happens if we reduce the spaces, if we change the climate, if we eradicate those species that bother us or get in our way? What would happen if the Iberian lynx disappeared? Dr. Astrid Vargas does not want that question to ever be answered. At the El Acebuche Breeding and Captivity Center in Doñana National Park, she directs the team in charge of carrying out this ambitious project of turning a dream into reality. With the sponsorship of the regional government of Andalusia and the Ministry of the Environment, the collaboration of numerous feline breeding centers around the world, and the support and backing of the entire population in the area around the park, a project has been carried out here since 2003 with the aim of breeding a sufficient number of lynxes to be able to reintroduce them into the wild. Accompanied by Dr. Astrid Vargas, director of the Ex Situ Conservation Project, we're going to find out about the extraordinary work done by this select group of Spanish scientists and see the advances that have been achieved, the dangers that still remain, and just how far science has come in its endeavor to save the lynx. The alarm bells that began ringing in the mid-1980s, predicting the rapid disappearance of the Iberian lynx, were finally answered on the 28th of March, 2005, when the first litter of lynxes was born in captivity. Brecina, Brezo, and Brisa represented the culmination of a great deal of work and, above all, the starting point for a project that will end in 2010. But the birth of these cubs does not mean the problem is solved. The Iberian lynx is still in extreme danger of extinction. There is always the threat of a poacher, poison, a fatal road accident, or a disease that decimates the small populations of lynxes that still survive in Doñana and Sierra Morena. The birth of that litter, along with the financial aid from the regional government of Andalusia and the progress made by the El Acebuche Center in the study of lynxes, all augur well for the future. The dream of saving the lynx can be achieved. Before telling the story of how a group of scientists is trying to prevent the Iberian lynx from disappearing from our forests, we are going to discover the privileged setting which human beings have managed to preserve from their own activities so that the fauna of the Iberian Peninsula can survive. The River Guadalquivir at the point at which it pours into the Atlantic Ocean in southwest Andalusia, has created a series of ecosystems that have together been declared a World Heritage Site. Entering from the sea, we discover 30 kilometers of virgin beaches. The sands, blown by the wind, accumulate on the scrubland, creating dunes that grow invading the interior. The slow advance of these constantly changing mountains gradually covers the vegetation and encircles green, humid areas that are full of life called corrales. The movement of the dunes is one of the best examples of how nature is constantly changing, endlessly evolving. In a few years, the humid scrublands will be engulfed by an enormous mountain of sand, while what now looks like a desert will once again be covered in vegetation. Mm -hmm. 
other changes that are easier to appreciate take place in the most extensive characteristic area of the National Park, the wetlands. These are extensive areas of clayey soil, which during the summer perhaps remind us of the desolate landscapes of the African deserts. And nonetheless, with the appearance of the rains, they are completely transformed and come to life. Thank you.